Hi, welcome to this edition of Supply Chain Spotlight. I'm JT Angstrom with Freight Waves. Joining me today is Mike Southward from Transflow. Uh, you came up from Tampa, or did you fly in from DC? Yeah, I came from uh, DC today. Okay. And it's nice to be down here. And so Mike is the president over at Transflow. He's been in that role for a little bit less than a year now, is that right? Right, yeah, I started in September. Okay, and you have a, a, a long line of experience in the technology and innovation space. Right, Transflow is my sixth company, sort of zero to a couple hundred million. Um, I grew up in Silicon Valley and um, love technology and um, like the inflection point, like growing small companies. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, the transportation space is a uh, traditionally known as a laggard in the technology space, so it's a, it's a great time for you to be entering this sector, industry subsector. Um, so it'll be fun to talk about. Before we talk about that, can we, can we talk a little bit about your background and some of the different roles you've had and experiences you've, you've uh, uh, experienced, you know, you've gone through in the, in the technology space? Yeah, sure. Well, I grew up in uh, San Francisco and um, started my career at Pricewaterhouse uh, Coopers, um, looking at doing M&A deals in, in the technology space and um, got very interested in technology from that. Um, since then, I've, I've uh, been, like I said, at six uh, private equity back back businesses, um, mostly in the software and communication space. And, and more recently, I was at uh, Varent, which is a large uh, analytics company based in New York, and I ran their AI and automation practice. Okay, that's awesome, that's awesome. So uh, I also have a background in M&A, uh, primarily with transportation companies, not technology companies, but uh, that's interesting that we, sh we share that overlap um, and a lot of exposure to the PE space as well. So uh, welcome to the transportation industry. Yeah, it's it's a lot more complicated when you get into it. Yeah, it is, and, and it's, it's also um, uh, a little bit more arcane than some. On one hand, it can be very arcane. On the other hand, it can be very cutting edge. So it's interesting to see where the industry has picked its spots. Right, and we see big differences with some of the large carriers and, and brokers and, and some of the midsize and, and, the, and smaller operators in, in terms of technology adoption. And, and at least from, from my standpoint, that's the opportunity. Absolutely. And, and as you look down the industry subsectors, you know, on one hand, there are a large swath of traditional brokers using foam based transaction, price discovery and, and closing. And on the other hand, in the same exact subsegment, you know, you have venture capital back brokers looking to do fully or, or close to fully automated transaction brokering. And similarly, in the asset based truckload space, um, Operators that can be as sophisticated as doing full-blown network routing optimization as compared to on the other side of the of the ball, you know, doing pure one-way transactional irregular route truckload. And so there's a, a lot of different ways to play the same exact sub-segments of the market. Right. And, and, you know, I guess from my experience and, and I had clients in transportation and government and financial services, you know, a lot of the same themes are picking up. You know, at the end of the day, um, automation wins and digitization wins and, and we're seeing those same trends and, and so you know ultimately to be competitive in this space long term folks will, will be adopting these technologies and what's what's great is that you know there's a there's a positive ROI you know as, as we look at coming into say a carrier and, and working on that digital transformation we're seeing real rates of return something that we can prove and give them confidence about and, and so um, you know COVID has, has only accelerated that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so with that, can we talk a little bit about Transflow for benefit of the audience? Transflow, you know, the model, uh, maybe a little bit about the brief history, uh, and also um, Transflow as you come into it and sort of your, your thought for even just the next year, realizing that a year in a private equity-backed enterprise is sure. it's a sprint. Right. Well, most people know Transflow as, as you know, a scanning company, you know, where, where it has its, its roots in, 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 in document intelligence. Um, over the last 10 years, it, it's migrated to mobility solutions. And now we're looking at connectivity solutions, you know, through the whole ecosystem, you know, connecting the shipper to the broker, to the carrier, and ultimately to the driver. Um, we have over 2 million downloads of, of our mobile app, and, and we connect to ELDs as well as a host of other um, driver-related features. So, you know, when you think of um, a, a driver capturing an image into it, um, sending that image to, to a carrier and to a broker and even to outside parties like factoring companies and, and um, auditing companies like that, that's where we sit. In the middle, um, ideally, is a, a neutral provider, you know, with that information. And, um, you know, as, as we move forward, you know, the market is moving out of traditional documents into 
you know, into data, and uh, we want to participate in that, and we think we can accelerate it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what's what's unique about the operating company, or, or what's both unique and or beneficial, perhaps not necessarily unique, is is uh, you know, unique in the sense that the value proposition of the market over the past decade has been very differentiated um, in addition to the fact that it continuously evolves, you know, whether it be around physical documents or whether it be around now getting into more data connections, whether it be around uh, dealing with uh, handheld solutions, regardless of what the, 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 the core offering actually is. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to play that. And, and you know, on the other side of the ball to, to the second half of my comment, you guys have already have pretty deep market penetrations and a lot of relationships across the industry landscape. And so as you think about taking uh, the company as you entered it and sort of helping perpetuate this next evolution of growth, you already have a really good footing to stand on to then kind of level up, if you will. Can right. we talk about, yeah, which is tremendous, right? Um, it's, it's not a turnaround scenario or anything of the sort. Right? No, we've been like, growing a, a lot. I mean, we're in uh, 80% of, of the largest 250 carriers, um, have a significant penetration in the broker market as well, and, and just starting on the um, with shippers on, on the EBOL side. Yeah, and so, and so with that, being that this is a growth story and enhancing that value proposition and further penetrating the market, how do you think about um, different areas that you want to look at in the marketplace Across shippers, brokers, carriers, some some things you really want to uh, either specialize in or, or further progress your your specialization in. Well, in the carrier market, we think there's a lot of room. Um, you know, right now, if you look at uh, like freight waves reports in terms of the number of folks that are adopting technology, the penetration is still relatively low. There's there's a lot of white space um, in 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 the carrier market. Um, within broker market, you know, we're trying to recreate the same experiences that you have with your dedicated fleet um, as with your brokerage. And um, we are, that product is, is called Velocity um, and allows, you know, digital freight tendering, visibility solutions um, within that. Um, and then connecting that to the shipper with our EBL product is, is a core part. So all those areas are focused, but, but ultimately, you know, it's, it's about the data and, and similar to freight waves and, and, and how data has become an important part of your story. Um, we think we can leverage that to provide insights to, to all, all three of those constituents. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's a lot of, we're, we're in a data revolution right now, yep. um, through and through. And, and historically, the transportation space had been a large consumer of data, but also would consume a lot more data if it, if it existed. And so the, the more technology platforms of all sorts can uh, create differentiated views on data, there's a big marketplace for that, and there's a real opportunity. Right, just working through those use cases and, and providing not reports, but actionable intelligence, right? Um, real insights that, that can impact the business, I, I think is really important, and there's um, a number of areas there. So, you know, looking, um, you know, within that, opening up, having a secure open cloud platform, ensuring that the, the documents or digitization um, is available to, to all the right people at the right time is, is a really important part of, of our focus over, over the next handful of years. Absolutely, and, and you know, given your background and, and some previous discussions we've had, you know, you're also going to be very heavily involved with product and innovation in addition to go to market and operations and commercial and marketing. Yep. Can we talk a little bit about um, how you think about that, that specific product and innovation function, um, some investments you might be thinking about, whether it's functional, whether it's net new product, uh, whether it's HR and talent. Um, how do you think about applying your lessons from your previous experiences to Transflow and or the transportation industry? Yeah, that's a good question. I, um, you know, I think there's a lot of similarities, you know, within transportation um, in terms of, you know, how we manage our, our innovation process. Um, there's endless of things to, to do, and, 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 and transportation um, being the fragmented market that it is, um, you get a lot of um, insights in, into customers and, and prioritizing those. And so I think, you know, when innovation is highly effective, it's when it's when you're really capturing the voice of the customer, really understanding their top priorities and what moves the needle, and ensuring that you know what those what those items are are coming out of the development shop and so that tight linkage between the customer and really being focused on the customer first um, with our development team is is something that i think you know us and, and all companies can can probably do a better job of and and so that's um 
you know, if you're asking me my one focus, it would be drawing that connection a little tighter. Yeah, directly connecting the market with the product. And that's, that's a right. big challenge for a lot of the technology companies in, in any marketplace, really. Right, and, and looking at it, you know, from, from a value creation, you know, technology is, is great. We all like playing with it, but understanding it from a business perspective and how to move the needles. This is a highly competitive space, and, and um, you know, the last year showed that. I mean, some of the, the weaker carriers um, had really difficult times, and the stronger ones gained market share. And a lot of those stronger ones, they gained market share through, through technology adoption. And so, you know, with that, understanding what moves the needle and, and how we can positively impact their business, um, you know, you'll be, or they will be customers for life. Absolutely, absolutely, and that makes a lot of sense. And then also thinking through uh, who are your best customers, not in terms of, uh, you know, current, uh, current commercial opportunity, but also long-term secular, you know, growing with customer base is, in, is, is important, recognizing that there are varying different growth rates based on, you know, whichever given technology solution is being provided. Right, I, I think you know um, these are complex solutions. Uh, operationally, they're 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 challenged to to install. Uh, right, it takes effort on on all parties, and and so folks, um, you know, they're looking at not only the technology but how you operationalize it, and so that service component is 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 very significant um, as a, as a part of the story, as it is with a lot of technology. You know, typically. You know, best of class technology doesn't need to be integrated early, early stages, and then you move through integrated products and, and ultimately to suite products. And, and I think the expectations in the market today, as transportation matures, is that stuff works, right? It's plug and play. It's easy to integrate, open APIs. A lot of these interfaces um, should um, you know, allow the, the customer to adapt the technology to meet the needs of their business, not adjust the processes around your technology. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, appetite for that as well in the marketplace. We're seeing it, you know, absolutely. And I think there's, um, there's a willingness and an understanding. And I would, I would argue that, you know, a lot of the, um, some of the West Coast, the digital freight brokers that, that started from a technology first platform are, are driving some of these behaviors. You know, the, the expectations um, on that side as, as well as from the consumer side and, and, and what the end customers are, are driving some of the behavior, which is, which is great. Yeah, that's tremendous. And so, you know, final thoughts, what excites you most about working now at the intersection of technology and transportation? I think the opportunity for significant change. You know, and I'll give an example when um, in, in my, my previous life, when I looked at automation opportunities and, and AI opportunities within banking versus say a, a sector that um, wasn't as long in its maturity like government, you know, it was, um, it was significant in that the government, the change for, for a government customer was, was, was huge. You can go from 1980s all the way to, you know, to, to today in, in one fell swoop. We were making very small changes in the financial services. Within transportation, you have you know, a, a, a tremendous amount of interactions, transactions, right? So you have great data, and with data, you can typically make big improvements and refinements. And so you know, I'm excited about where the industry's going, the, the overall opportunity. And, um, you know, I think, again, I think Transflow can play a big role in that. No, I, 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 I think you can, and I expect you will. And I think that'll be really exciting to, to, to see from our, cha our chair um, your all's progress over the next year, two, three. And so we look forward to that, and we wish you the best of your role, and I, I fully expect you'll be incredibly successful at it. I look forward to coming back and telling you about it. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll gladly host that. All right. Um, so with that, thank you for joining us. Thank Mike you. Southward, president at Transflow. I'm JT Angstrom with Freight Waves. Have a great day.